Howdy. I'll um, do intros in just a sec because we're just about to press play. Um, yeah, so guys, if we could all um, watch it with subtitles on, then we won't have um, sound bleeding from the actual um, episode. Mm -hmm. Oops. And I'll give you guys a countdown when we're about to press play. David, we don't know each other, but you're the coolest person I've ever been on a Zoom call with. Just <laughs> FYI. <laughs> like well, this. I appreciate it. All right, so we'll press play in five, four, three, two, one. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, jam eaters and jam munchers. My name is Isaac. I am one half of the Unplanned Trek duo. And today we are watching the next generation Starship Mine because if Die Hard is a Christmas movie and Space Die Hard is this episode, then this episode is therefore a Christmas movie. For this really weird and unhinged look at this episode, I am joined by a cast of thousands from around the globe. First, we had Kaki from Joy of Trek. How are you today, Kaki? Ahoy, fellow Saddle stealers probably should have prepared something. I'm doing fine, thank you. Hello. <laughs> no, no, that was better than mine. That was fantastic. <laughs> We've also got Mr. Goodwill from the Trickin' Up North podcast. Now I have Earl Grey. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> we have Jack from Let's Talk About Tricks. Hello there. I'm all set for today's scheduled very on this week. It's fantastic. And Mark is with us as well from the Shuttle Pod Show. Hello, Mark. Hi, I'm actually just here to make sure that you're getting some shit done. Uh, <laughs> I have, I've been hearing rumors in the office that you're lagging on delivering episodes. So Prepare to be disappointed. To be honest, I haven't <laughs> even looked at the screen yet. I've also got Jack next to me as well, who is from Two Minute Trek. Hello, so Jack. are we Two Minute Trek or are we Unplanned Trek plus Two Minute Trek? Exactly. Right. Yeah. <laughs> a bit of both. So, um, guys, um, what we're doing is a live rewatch of, of it now. So, with introductions, I've missed the first uh, couple of minutes. What are we doing, yeah. guys? We're in the turbo lift at the moment. Yes. And Did is you see that opening talk? shot of the, 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 the big D in the sort of wedged between the two plates of the toaster oven that it's in? So glorious. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. A, a D toaster. I love that. Oh, and now we're learning about how to fill uncomfortable silences. Does anybody here, you know, have any experience filling silence? Wow. <laughs> Isaac, you gave us all this all this sort of warning about how to avoid like talking over each other. We kind of have the opposite problem here. Uh, we, I we, don't we know what you mean. Bit, well. <laughs> Just solve that one. There it is. <laughs> for, for something that calls itself a turbo lift, it's incredibly slow at times. Like it's exactly the speed of plot. That's exactly how it's, fast the turbo lift. It's the exposition <laughs> lift. What are you on about? <laughs> the plot development shaft. They're doing it. They're doing the thing that you told us not to do. Oh, after you. After you. No, you spoke first. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So when am I going to go to Nakatomi Plaza? They've got to be down. Yeah. It's called yeah. Ten Forward in this episode. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it, would be, it would be so good if Alan Rickman just turned up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Captain Picard. Yeah. So It's pronounced Leviosa. <laughs> <laughs> so as you guys know, I've, I've asked for... Um, some live tweets during this and I have been um, given a tweet from uh, Melissa A. Nathan um, just trying to find it, sorry the wonders of live okay, too bad I have to work but I did re-watch it a couple of months ago when we, when <clears throat> we did our episode about it because we've actually done this on Unplayed Trek before um, Melissa still thinks that Riker and Troy should have gotten a Mourn Hub medal point, which we didn't give that week. So be on the lookout for that. Also, I would encourage you guys when we get to the scene with Hutch to watch the scene from Hutch's perspective because the whole crew made oh. fun of him 
But I think mm. if you watch this movie from Hutch's perspective, mm. everyone yeah. on in on the on our traditional crew are bastards. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. They spend the whole time negging him. Yeah. 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 No and one, what's he no doing? Like he's throwing that. a party for people. Correct. Yeah. yeah. Let's celebrate. Oh, let's make fun of this guy. And yeah. then they and then they uh they actually do they make fun of him in front of him, which is great. Yes. I that's right. That. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um in fact it's like, I've only got room for six friends. I'm not, I'm not talking to anyone that's not in the in the main cast. <laughs> oh, it's is already the, kind um, of lonely to see those displays off. Yeah. yeah it, it's yeah. got the vibe of um, the last two episodes of Picard, doesn't it? The, the Looking at the bridge for the first or last time, depending on how time works. Did they use Picard the size. Yeah, yeah. Picard good. size. Appreciating the fact that this ship has got a carpet. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Take your take your shoes off and like make fists yeah. with your toes like John McClane. Yeah. yeah. Yes. You yes. should totally do that. Yeah. He's wearing too much clothes for a Die Hard movie too. <laughs> Just that's pulling yeah. down a white vest. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh, look at him all maudlin and melancholy. Yeah. And here he comes. I think Tuvok's about to come on the bridge. Yeah. There he is, no. Tuvok. Is, it... is that right? this episode? <laughs> yep, there he is. Yep. <laughs> oh. Hey, Tuvok takes over a lot of shit, doesn't he? He also takes over yeah. Deep Space Nine. He Does he? Oh, yes, he yeah, does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's yeah, yeah. He's the Klingon. He's in a movie as well. Isn't he? Yeah, yeah, he's in, he's in one of the movies. He's also in the he's... Mirror episode of DS9. He's on the Enterprise yes. B in yeah. Generations. Uh huh. Mm. So he's he's renowned for being on both the Excelsior and the Enterprise B at the same time. It's a he was two indeed. Vix. He's also one of the oh, many crew members on, on the Marquis ship that were were spies. Everyone yeah, yeah, said yeah. Before us was a spy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then Chakota says, "Was anyone on my ship actually working for me?" And everyone's like. <laughs> God, guys, it, it's been like 36 years and I'm still in awe of these this introduction, like this this whole opening credits, just I know. watching the Enterprise. It's Industrial still to this magic, day. They worked for their money. Yeah. Do you guys duck when the ship flies over your shoulder? Good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I also <laughs> hold my done. breath when someone in a movie is like swimming underwater. Mm. Oh, mm. okay. Finding it always movie killed me. Yeah, <laughs> I was going to say Jaws probably wasn't a good movie for you. <laughs> the Abyss must have been difficult. We need a bigger boat. It was difficult for everyone, reportedly. Uh, well, that's, that's true. It always um, bothered me uh, with the original series where the Enterprise is like flying an angle towards you, and I'm just like, uh -huh. how is that like? <laughs> yeah, I, I still love like they they put a. Um, a little bit of cardboard in the model for someone walking in the observation lounge as yeah. well. So when the ship's going yeah, forward, did you just see that? Yeah, it's brilliant. I always love that effect, seeing people walking around. It's pretty cool. Oh, oh that's it. so cool. The thing I'd like more in starships is that they just wouldn't go straight, that they could go up and down or... Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. <laughs> you think in such three-dimensional terms. Ooh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I saw Hutch give Bev a kiss there. Oh, there's the data meme. Yeah. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> so oh. I'm, I'm prepared to give data a pass because he's trying to learn how to do small talk and he's just mimicking. He's not mimicking to try to be, although it come, it's how we see it, he's not mimicking it for the sake of making fun of Hutch. Right. No. He's, he's actually just trying to learn, but everyone else is just a real bastard to Hutch. Yeah, but Compared to insurrection. I think they're just still being a little creepy about it, just the way he's doing. He's hiding behind the walls. Who does he think he is? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. But I tell you, you what. Hide oh. and seek, but I don't hide behind small poles. But yeah, okay, but you yeah, can. You want something that makes maybe true. your size or wider, perhaps? <laughs> yeah, that's a very thin pillar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm fully convinced that Hutch would appreciate it. You know, if if, if Hutch had found out what Data was doing and mm. why, he'd be delighted. Yeah. yeah. Let me give you some pointers, you'd say. 
I mean, H Hutchinson likes everyone here, and he's so glad that they're showing up to his party. Uh, uh, what was her name, the, the, the person who, who sent you this tweet? Because she's completely right. Yeah. Oh, um, that, that was Melissa A. Nathan. Thank you, Melissa. Mm. It's so weak, so I'm just waiting for Data to go. Like, so go I do kind of feel like when Data goes off to the side and then to, gives his own rendition of Hutchinson off to the side, I feel like he's actually mocking the guy. Like, there's a lot of things about Data, and there have been a lot of things about Data over the past seven years, where it seems like if you look at it in a certain way, he could actually mm -hmm. know what he's doing. Like, he could be being annoying during those times on the bridge on purpose. For example... Oh. Where oh, did they get the, uh, the Vegas glasses from as well? Like, I think I'm going to have those... a mimosa. <laughs> I think those glasses might be from a high school science classroom. <laughs> a beaker with a wine glass on it. <laughs> I'd have that. <laughs> oh, I know you would. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you mean, Isaac. Carefully opens <laughs> bottle of martini. Mm. What is it? <laughs> <laughs> Mind blown. <laughs> I do like the Star Trek talk about Celsius here, or or is that just my version of it? No, oh, they no, they do talk about Celsius. Mm, yeah. <laughs> I can oh. look this up now. Picacha said um, a saddle was a very personal thing. Are we taking mm. that as literal or as a euphemism? Well, this so, is the kind of saddle you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> saddle and Picard get more no place. <laughs> like a maybe he's or like a leather saddle. Maybe both. Oh, maybe okay. he's got a Fair maybe enough. deep deep down Jean Luc's got a penchant for <laughs> Captain Pike's quiff. <laughs> uh, don't we all? Down, uh, don't we all? As we all do. Yeah. And by quiff we mean the fantastic <laughs> do. <laughs> Pike's peak. I believe his hairstyle oh, is And by people, you mean. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> at least you guys never said to him face to face, I like your hair. Oh my God, look at this outfit. <laughs> this is it's amazing. So look much velour. Fucking and stud, man. When, when he's back on screen, haven't noticed how low cut his top is. He's showing a bit more than even McLean is. Oh, it's, it's deep oh, yeah. V all the way. That's yeah. what it is. He's, he's definitely meeting up with Vash later. So da, this da, is da. look at the forest of chest hair he possesses as well. It's beautiful. Oh, I know. <laughs> good use of forest. Admiral forest. You could you could literally ride a horse through it. It's that majestic. Look at it. Well he's got the saddle. Because of how much I've seen Tim Russ in Voyager, I genuinely thought that he had um pointy ears. Hmm. Right. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh it is... here we go. Suvok, mm. don't take that. Oh no. <laughs> Ooh. It is a bit of a mind blower. Number one, that I just learned that Captain Picard can do a Vulcan neck thing. I know. I I yeah, right. Before. And then secondly, that he did one on Tuvok. Yeah. I think though. <laughs> <laughs> but I think I think he learned it via the mind meld with Sarek. Oh yeah. yeah. Um, good point. And you know what? Nice one. Yeah. Oh, it's what he learned about Michael also. Yeah. <laughs> 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 and the various other children that Sarek doesn't talk about. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Sarek is a Vulcan slut. That's all we're going to say. Really? Yes. Uh, the ones the that we dog. don't know about, though, they, they're still better than Spock in, in Sarek's eyes. <laughs> oh. <laughs> He hates well, all Isaac, I don't pay you to be a blasphemer. I pay you to be funny. Yeah, we don't have to Why not both? Hey, who was going to... You can't operate a transporter without, like, doing the two-finger, you know, the, the two-finger <laughs> stroke, right? Uh, otherwise, finger Miles wouldn't have a job. Oh, are you saying that the greatest Starfleet officer who ever lived was a yes. waste of time? Wow. But he is. He's what, so annoying. His but, voice is like, I don't know. Don't say things we can't say oh there. my god. Oh my god. Yeah. Is this Kirk oh. O'Brien sat next to you, Isaac? <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> Some of us over here have Irish ancestry, so Jack, please be careful. Oh, yeah, Miles was a union man. <laughs> he was a union man, more than a hero. When the um, guards being hunted 
comes in from the wormhole with like very early DSI. Husk. He's just yeah. yeah, yeah. He's being his voice is like, no, stop the whole time. All, <laughs> all, all I will say is all I will say is Miles must have been kidnapped or held by Keiko in Picard season three because season three would have been done in three episodes because Miles O'Brien would have just gone, Hey, look at you, you little feckin' changelings. <laughs> Thump, and that'll be it done. I, I really thought he'd come back for episode 10. I thought, I thought we were yes. going to see Miles. Yeah. Picard season three, the trek up north cut. I want to see it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't. There'd be so many gimmicks we'd get out of that. Okay, now. I'm curious whether he is indeed mocking him. Okay. Yeah. Let's for the data list. I mean, between our collective knowledge, he, he, he we make up the man really on the special. colors. He compliments the man on the colors in the room. The colors in the room are beige and purple. But for the nineties, that was the most colorful you could ever be in interior design. <laughs> yeah. And, and okay. as a person who is currently wearing a purple shirt, I do want to. <laughs> uh, it's, it's an underappreciated color. But at least you're not the Romulans who just wear curtains. It's fine. And Neelix. <sighs> Ne yeah, we don't talk about Neelix. Yeah, he wears a couch. Um. <laughs> oh, and, uh, and and Quark. I found a blog by a gentleman who uh, like purchased all of the Ferengi costumes that he was able to get, like built up a whole collection to the point where, where I think Star Trek 2009, the J.J. Abrams film was being promoted and they wanted to get a photo of uh, a Chris Pine with a Ferengi. They called up him because he still had them. And he's a per person whose, whose stature is short enough that he can wear them. And it's a glorious collection of, of, of fantastic outfits. So colorful. They do have beautiful outfits, the Ferengi, I will say that. Mm -hmm. Although there are only male outfits, right? Uh, Ishka wears. Oh, yeah. Ooh, ooh, I think and Ishka what... wears a male outfit. Males only have outfits, right? Yeah. Well, well. Right. Not now. Was the young woman who who pretended to be a man? Yeah. You know that uh, that yeah. Quark sort of fell in, in in bromance with. Yeah, she wore a male outfit. Do, do you think yeah, uh, Picard? Do you think Picard should have been barefoot for this, just for the added yes. diehard reference? What and is that logo? Like just, the yes. It looked like he just found a Zippo lighter as well. <laughs> yeah, with a cool sort of eagle tribal on it. Yeah. He, he should have answered Tuvok. I am Tuvok. He is Very just unsweet. so deep. Like, even now, he's undercover for Starfleet Intelligence, and he's just mm -hmm. forgotten it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Section 31. Yeah, yeah, section thirty one. The yeah. dude the dude is always in character. Like you knock him out, he still won't talk. He's this is this is the thing. The but this is the thing with most of the Voyager crew. They were all double agents because look at Paris and Lacano. Mm. That was oh, yeah. a name change. Yeah. I don't care what anyone says. Yeah. That was a name change. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> That's a very good point. I love what they did with Bowadex though. That so yeah, nice. that was excellent, mm. wasn't it? Oh, so good. Lower Decks is such a gift to just yes. fandom in yes. general and us in particular. I'm going to buy the, the companion um, after Christmas because it just looks so good. Oh, is it out yet? Yeah, yeah, it's just come out, I believe. Oh, awesome. Is it a companion like the TNG companion was where it like talked about the sort of, yeah. of the show? And, oh, oh, we have. Cool. Well, it's, it's sort of like uh, a Cerritos Bible and here is engineering, here is the tricorders. Yeah. Here is Sa'ana being an absolute cat. But then apparently there's also like uh, a comment threads by some of the characters who sort of hijack the, the, the engineering manual. It sounds so good. <laughs> uh, call Tucker Tubes, damn it. <laughs> for Father's Day or Dad's birthday, I got him like a Lower Decks comic that he read yeah. when we went to Melbourne to see Paul McCartney. Yeah, that was, that was for Father's Day. And yeah, I've got a Lower Decks story in a graphic novel, which, which is really cool. Oh, so cool. Good move, Jack. Yeah, yeah very good yeah. move. Yeah, Jack's got competition. I do have other kids, but he's always, he's always can play the favourite card with, with presents like that. Well, <laughs> well Jack's my favourite... Jack, Jack's my favorite brown, so just so you know. Wow. He doesn't say much, but when he does, he hurts people bad. <laughs> Jack's the only one there who gets anything done. Mike, are you the Hans Gruber of this chat? 
Jack didn't even bother defending me, Mark. He's like, no, <laughs> you're absolutely spot on. Yeah. He doesn't have to, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he understand. He gets it. He, Jack knows a baller when he meets one. It's just a couple of just a couple of bosses talking to each other. Oh my god, that's so hip! It makes me sick. Oh god, you're making me feel like an intern again. You just have this oh, energy no. about you, Mark. <laughs> I'll go full street in Vegas. I'm like, yo, oh, Mark, I'm sorry, what is I up? I forgot you were here. <laughs> oh, awesome. Oh, how awesome. <laughs> Don't kill Hutch. Oh, no. The Nakatomi Christmas party is ruined. Oh, it, Hutch is like that guy that goes, hey, I know how to solve things. I'll go in there and talk to them. Oh, yeah, Ellis. He's yeah. that guy. Mm. Yes, yeah. he is super high on cocaine. Mm. Well, he does drink. Well, okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Touch lives hey, on do inside know, of data. Do we're, we in know the Jeffrey, yeah. we're in the Jeffrey's cubes now, which is very much like McLean walking through the oh, the the, um, the vent. Yeah. yeah. Now I know what a replicated dinner feels like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we know oh, him. Full of meditation time. Oh, him. Yeah. Wait the the woman. Was she also the woman who played like the Irish woman with the with the, with the football yes. that Riker was super? She was, was that her? I believe it is, yeah. Okay, okay. I'm on Where could a girl fight. go to wash her feet? I know, mm. I know. <laughs> like, dude, wherever, it's the Enterprise. Polomini hated that. <laughs> it, was, it was very, you know, Irish lady die die, Irish stereotypes, yeah. you know, like Pashog. <laughs> There's a lot of stereotypes in that episode. Mm -hmm. Yes. No, Irish no, people it's alcoholic. Patricia Tolman. She's, uh, um. uh, 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 um, what's it called? Not Lita. Yeah, she was Lita from Babylon 5. She was the telepath. Oh, I thought you were going to say Lita oh, yeah. from DS9 now. I was about to say. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> there haven't been that many crossovers between um, Babylon 5 and, and, and Star Trek, right? I think just... Like Worf's dad was also Susan Ivanova's uncle. Is Babylon Five the one with Walter Koenig in it? Yes, yeah, it is. Yeah. 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 Can Can I also say that Picard oh, immediately that's goes? The car is Admiral Pomelo. Oh um, yes, solid pull. Can Can I also say that Picard, like when he's captured, goes to the immediately the only other bald crew member of the Enterprise. Yeah. Like, my, my name is Mott. <laughs> and none of them go but you don't have the credentials to be a barber credentials by you mean hair yes yes yeah well he does still have a bit of hair at the back come on yeah he's, he's this is at the front party at the back is picard oh look how well he's doing right he's, he's sort of hugging himself you can tell that he's a real <clears throat> actor Mm. <laughs> He's a proud Yorkshire man, is Patrick that Stewart. That he is. I, love how I remember when I... Sixth and, season, sixth and seventh season, they got a little, like, they wore out all of their makeup ideas, so they're like, hey, let's just put a saxophone on this guy's face. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't let Michael Westmore hear you say that. Oh, no. oh yeah. Then again, I, I, I feel you there. Because like we just did a, a, a Farscape podcast and like yeah. Dave Elsie and the and the Creature Workshop, this was around the same time even. Ah, uh, no, that was a bit later. But good. Oh gravy. come on, guys! At least move the body and not put a velour duvet on him. Come on. It's Hutch. You got to give it the Hutch. Farscape was great because it always brought in all that puppetry. I love the puppetry. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. With the uh, with the special effects. Absolutely All right, so amazing. I think this might be the scene that we have to look at to see if it's worth a Mourn Hub point. Oh? They are very close. But, you know, Riker can get closer than that. It's Riker. Yeah, that's but true. In this situation, <laughs> it's as close as you can get in a attack. <laughs> well, while you're being attacked. I mean, there's a... There's a velour curtain right there. He can just rip it down. <laughs> yeah. Hey, look at the arms on Geordie, by the way. Geordie yeah. kind of 
Yeah. Looks like he's a silly little peptide cake right now. He's a, he's he's swan. <laughs> he is a silly little peptide cake right now. <laughs> it is. Yeah. I think I think a lot of people would like a slice of that cake. <laughs> in, in spite of what Star Trek would have you. The thing on. is, Le- Levar could literally just lay there, go to sleep, and no one would ever know. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Nah, it's too That's much for professional for that. Yeah. It's a good paycheck. Sleep through it. I remember when the uh, Greatest Generation guys interviewed him uh, and they asked him about how Geordie was essentially unfuckable on the show, right? He he struck out with everything and he went, well, yeah, that was some bullshit. (laughs) He's correct. (sighs) I like to think that maybe we only saw the ones that didn't land. That, you know, yeah. Jordy was oh, out there getting yeah. it. You know, yeah. we just, it was yeah. between episodes. You know? Right. Because that's why it affected him so much. He just really wasn't, <laughs> wasn't used to wait. Somebody took a pass on yeah. all of this. Oh, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> like, are you also blind? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the dude restored a Galaxy class ship in his garage. I would have him. Speculations on who his wife might be. Yeah, I was going to say because they have like beautiful children. Yeah, they have, don't they? That is a that is a good looking family. Yeah. Ooh, it's that, that random a infant quote. from season five. Oh, is it? Is, is that what you believe? Is it I Gomez? believe it's the random infant from season five. The the uh, uh, she spills uh, stuff over Picard. No, not Tonya Gomez. No, that's no. Gomez. Yeah, uh, the one who up on the bridge. Uh, there were two girls who rotated at Crusher's station. Oh yes, yes, I I know you mean. One was yeah. Ro, and one was this uh, like. Oh Rager, you uh, talking about Serial yeah. Rager? Was she the astronaut? No, that's Major <laughs> Mason, who was in the transporter room. Oh yes, thank you. Serial Rager was very often in the front. Her and Sabrina LeBeau from the Cosby Show. Oh, uh, Rager was there in Clues, for example. With the everybody got knocked out and Data was lying. Yeah, yeah. She's I'm really sorry. I'm sorry. We're just doing... now. We're we're falling into the silence because we we're all getting a free podcast from you right now. We're going like, oh, that's. <laughs> yeah. Oh wait, hold on. No, it's an interactive kind of thing. <laughs> I'm just in awe of Picard's maneuverability for his age to like my knees are, uh, are absolutely screwed at 36 years old and this dude is just leaping through these Jeffries tubes oh yeah how old is Picard in this season uh 60 odd oh I don't know if he's that old I don't think he's old as he's old, old, 23 old, or old. 9 he was born what oh, year? Wow. is it 23 or 9 oh let me hold on. Oh, Fact talking... check with trekking up north. Yeah, yeah I was going to say. Buddy. Well, he was in his fifties at the start, and this was like yeah, season six. So yeah, thirteenth of July. Thirteenth of July, twenty-three or five. No, Patrick Stewart is ten years. Y- Patrick Stewart is ten years younger than what Jean Luc Picard go. is. So twenty-three or five, he was born. So this was season six. So this was twenty-three sixty-eight. So yeah, he's in his sixties. Sixty-three, yeah. Yeah. Well, how old would be old in the car then? Well, well, he's he's a god. He was ninety-nine, I believe. Yeah, yeah. he did die and then became alive. Yeah, for some reason he died. An encounter at Farpoint, like we see uh, uh, McCoy, we see Bones, and he's like one hundred and thirty, which is apparently like. 130 is pretty old, but not like crazy old in the 24th century. Mm-hmm. Not only that, but that's the happiest Bones was ever in his lifetime when he was in his own. <laughs> <laughs> in between TNG and Picard, there's like Voyager, mm-hmm. DS9, mm-hmm. Lower Decks, yep. and then that's it. So. Maybe Prodigy? I'm not sure. Prodigy. Prodigy is five years after Nemesis. Right. Well, mm-hmm. they don't know does that, that. Does that mean Shinzo <laughs> can turn up like he does in our episodes? Oh, all right, I'm Shinzo. And it's just 30 <laughs> minutes of late night Shinzo. It's, just... <laughs> it's like One Piece where it's like 10, 10 minutes worth of content and then like 20 minutes worth of exposition. That's Yeah. 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 Or like 
the American versions of Gordon Ramsay cooking shows. Oh no! <laughs> oh, his! Sh- I want that blouse, guys. It's a beautiful blouse. Is this what he's in? Yeah, that's. Oh, I, um, I'm Jean Luc Picard in my riding pretty gloves pretty and silk erotic. shirt. It looks similar yeah. to Seven's outfits. So he's got velour pants, a silk shirt, and riding boots. How is Look this not the sexiest he has ever been? I'm sorry. I'm. Con- has anyone like- ever before or since seen Worf with a crossbow? This can't be. No, <laughs> That's can't such be- a good point. But it- <laughs> what is this? <laughs> Yeah, and it's got like that sculpture of like two can... warriors. They're doing leapfrog. They they appear to be oh, very that's... good friends. Like that's what? Caleb what sort of? <laughs> but what sort of permission does Worf have, uh, Captain? I would like a crossbow, an AK forty-seven, <laughs> right. a few grenades. What for? Just just to display. They're not low. Decoration. It's not I... weird. Who is supposed to be on the ship? The security chief. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, look, it's got orange bits. It's peace bonded. Uh, Come on. The bit that I find implausible about this scene is if you were breaking into Worf's room, you, the first thing you wouldn't be doing is looking for weapons. I'd be going to his top drawer on his bedside table. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Aren't you curious? No. Be there? No, no. I know. Well, that's it. Straight yeah. for no. the bottom. Straight for the bottom. Dude, wow. Double? Well, there would be two oh. deadly. That's my. That's the point I was making. No, that's where you find the deadliest stuff. True, the secret stuff. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think. And he's. What makes it worse? He's got two. <sighs> exactly. Yeah, it's for the day. One. <laughs> Michael, <laughs> like you're actually blushing more than the actual child who's on this call. <laughs> <laughs> the interesting thing though is goodwill does have a top drawer in shot on his um on his <laughs> <That's good. laughs> do you want to see what's in it <laughs> absolutely not absolutely god there are children on this call <laughs> oh oh no it's so much cooler you got a niner shirt death to the opposition <laughs> <laughs> oh look at this shot Oh, the. Oh, that's a good shot. That is the same. <laughs> Disco. Disco. You can buy, you can buy the Rito's one as well. So the one that they wear. I, the I wanted Rito. one for. When I went to Paramount Studios, I was like, I'm going to save up all my money and buy all the Star Trek stuff. And there was zero Star Trek merchandise at Paramount Studios. Ooh, wow. wow. What a betrayal. Did you just think that stuff from Mark's house? You are. <laughs> You just grabbed those shirts from Mark's house. I don't know what you mean. <laughs> <laughs> My you attorney tell has advised you stole me. So much from me. <laughs> yeah. Here is the studio. Where's my mic's gone? <laughs> <laughs> I Ooh, think this got a lot of a lot of young people in the nineties into chemistry. Mm, yes. You know, I haven't really been paying attention, but this is actually kind of dope. Um, the it podcast really? or the episode we're watching, we are going to be a lot more specific. Hang on, the crossbow's got Klingon symbols on it. Yeah, it's a oh. Klingon crossbow. Clearly, it's the crossbow wow. we always see Worf with. A Klingon crossbow <laughs> would have two. <laughs> is this like the oh, very the, the crappy? Is this the crappy Star Trek toy from the sixties that just had Spock <laughs> with a siren on yeah. top? It's the crossbow <laughs> that says Worf on it. <laughs> 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 How so many aliens have human culture? Like a random yeah. planet. How many like these ways? Um, press. I don't know, but they wouldn't have. You've clearly not seen the the. You've clearly not seen the next generation episode where they just have a wild goose chase and basically okay. said that all life stemmed yeah. from one thing and then just never talked about it again. Never again. They, Never Same again. With the preservers and uh, like, what else do we have? Oh, we look like the Dominion. <laughs> You're completely yeah. right. Yeah. I really, yeah. I really wanted that to be a good episode, uh, and it, <laughs> it could have been probably if they had made it a two-parter. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, challenge accepted. Sadly, guys. it was dumb. No, hold on. 
the joy of Trek will will take up this challenge eventually, and we'll 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 try and find something glorious about it. <laughs> there is a silver lining to everything except Court of Honor. Yeah, yeah, very good point. Yeah, yeah. It's an actual statement. I'm waiting for those yeah. creatures that Ramek was the queen bee for that you know come in the net to to come back. Surely they'll they'll repay that storyline at one point. Remember Ramek? Ramek? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the guys. Uh, I, there was a whole book that featured them where they ended up. They were like cousins of the Trill, only they had sort of yeah. developed differently. Right. Wait, what's I never this now? saw a link to them in the Trill, but I can see that now. Um, Remick was the guy that was, it might have even been season Contagion. one in Conspiracy, I think, wasn't it, Jeff? Conspiracy. Yeah. yeah, you're correct. Yeah. Can I just say how crap these soldiers are, or oh. terrorists, or whatever, where they can just let Riker walk like 30 centimeters from their face to talk to them, and they're the ones with the guns? And they're allowed to eat and drink and like heal them. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and then he goes down in one punch. A hutch party would be well stocked, though. So there was always going to be good oh, food. Yeah. But I like the fact that, you know, uh, Rocket just knocked one of them out and the other one decided to retaliate by trying to hit him with his gun. You've got a gun. <laughs> You've got an actual you gun, can, mate. You can solve this a lot quicker. Yeah, and you can intimidate the rest of the... Like, you're, you're prepared to shoot... He has an awful lot of nostrils, this dude. I feel like <laughs> Imagine him having a cold. Yeah, oh, yeah, no, not too. the wolf ball. I feel like they were going to have him... Uh, shoot, but um, they've already spent too much money to get the crossbow and to, uh, yeah. <laughs> so. the saddle would have cost a bit. True. Yeah, it's a very personal thing. Also, he, he <laughs> fired the crossbow sideways. Like that was very gangster of Jean Luc to do. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't no. turn out so well. Hey, this Enterprise looks absolutely fantastic with the lights down low. It does, doesn't it? Yeah. I can see I, why uh, uh, Captain Liam Shaw kind of falls like he must have seen this on the, on yeah, the, the Starfleet record. Oh, crew. there's always so much depth to the bridge of the Enterprise D when the when it's at red alert and when the lights are turned down low, like mood yeah. lighting. It looks so much better. But you can really tell this is the four by three era of television, right? The the the, yeah. the proportions of the uh, the Enterprise D are designed to fill a nearly square uh, uh, area of screen. Yeah, but that that's what they said because they they could have they could have widescreened the 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 Blu-ray HD remasters, but they said you would just see step ladders and random grips and wires and lights and everything at the side. Yeah, yeah. Although you can see the cardboard cutout of the Jeffrey's tube distance right at the back. So would that mean when they did the movies, they'd have to like, make all the sets like way bigger? Yeah. I mean, I think they did, right? In in, in generations, the uh, uh, the corridors are wider because, yeah, you're dealing with a, a, a wide screen. You want to fill more space. 16 by 9 format, yeah. And then for when they did the Enterprise D for Picard, obviously they had to make it slightly bigger to accommodate... Mm. aspect ratios is this a does this pass the bechdel test did, did we just have two women who were who were named in this scene like talking mm. to each other about oh no they were talking about the card weren't they correct <laughs> so. really Riker, you've just got a busted lip man up but, he, but he's also now got attention yeah. Yeah. Yintaru. At this point, I think I'll shoot them after assaulting one of the terrorists. Yeah, if you're a terrorist. Or if you're yeah, a if I was a terrorist. Yeah. Jack's always starting sentences like, if I was a terrorist. Dot, dot, dot. <laughs> Well, yeah, I mean, if they if they were German terrorists relate. from the eighties, it would be infinitely better as well because they would have longer hair and. Mm, mm, that's true. When we watched Die Hard this year, we decided that we were going to go for the Germans. Yeah, we were watching it from the Germans' perspective this year. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> I all... didn't win, but we'll try again next year. Yeah, who knows what can happen in twelve months, right? <laughs> I mean, oh. I'm, when the FBI turned up in Die Hard, I'm just like, I'll oh, just shoot them, just yeah. have done with it. Johnson and Johnson, no relation. Oh, <laughs> really? <laughs> hey, I, I really like that joke. 
And then later, it's still to be it. the other one. <laughs> I've, I've met a bunch of those guys, and I I thought that was great. <laughs> I am one. Like at, at work, I have a I have a, a direct colleague that I work with. Same surname. In fact, he has the same name as one of my brothers, which is a a tricky thing when I get a text from one of my brothers and I think, "Wow, my colleague at work has suddenly gotten really intimate." And <laughs> See, I, I have I have a Stephen issue where my work has seven hundred and forty eight Stevens out of a staff compliment of 749. And it's just like, <laughs> when someone phones up, I'm like, I want to speak to Steve. And I'm like, I'm going to get a rock. And wh whoever it hits, you're going to speak to them. Yeah, it's coming to 10 forward, Jean-Luc. Um, Mark was saying earlier in the week that he was at the convenience store that's in Die Hard where the, um, where the, when the police officer first gets the call to say, can you check out yeah. the tower? How many Twinkies did you buy, Mark? Bear in mind, the right answer is not enough. Not enough. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so nice to put to... the science. Yeah. yeah. The yeah, have Starfleet either. emblems on the glass walls. Only like they're meant to be seen from the outside. Hmm. They're the wrong oh. way around from the inside. Yeah, they they could have frosted both. But, mm. Time to break out the brooms. We're about to be very on swept. Like which yeah. mine is it? Is it like mine or mine? Yeah, it's a good question. Does it's anyone know mine? The, it's why his. Is the title of this episode. <laughs> Jack asking the important questions. Yeah. Is it like enemy yeah. mine? Yeah, or mine is in like broom. Yeah. Boom, yeah. Take the yeah. Um, <laughs> That's really interesting. I, w I would have called it um, Star Trek The Next Generation with a Vengeance. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Trek hard. Pick harder, yeah. Oh, yeah, pick hard. I yeah. like that. Yeah. No, pike harder. <clears throat> pike hard, pike harder. We need a... A strange new world, like shot for shot yeah. remake of this episode with Pike. Oh. That's what I was trying to <laughs> say when I was talking about fake phases. Like, I feel like an episode like this could have worked better with the technology we have now, with the, the way yeah. phases just. Are you sure? Because that barrier on sweep, that, that looks like a barrier on sweep. Yeah. yeah. Do you know what a barrier on sweep looks like? Like that, <laughs> like every barrier so, sweep I've ever seen. So the so the barrier on sweep, right? Let let, let me just my bar my car got a barrier on sweep last week, so that's exactly what it looks like. Yeah, <laughs> so it looks like in Australia. So it essentially it cleans and decam decontaminates the ship and and gets rid of all organic matter. Yeah. Right, the ship's got plants. Yeah, it's got an entire arboretum. What happened? Yeah, exactly. What yeah. happens? Who's what happens the to the arboretum? What happens to the plants? What, huh. to what do you think Keiko's doing when she's not, <laughs> a, you know, on in, in frame? She's actually doing viciously, job, viciously beating Miles O'Brien <laughs> with some yeah. sort of blunt instrument. <laughs> what? <laughs> so it's what we We're just saw. So we saw we did see Starship blowing up, so it could be. Starship mine. Ding! Oh, the, the cleanest oh. starship now. Should, you know, they should have had a little twinkle on the hull. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I've just and worked we've out what. We've Simonized! <laughs> this episode wouldn't have worked on Enterprise because Flox would have needed like 118 shuttles to get all his animals out of the sick bay. Or else they would oh, have been yeah. very swept. No, I, I disagree. I think it would have worked because, again, we could have seen Connor Trini running around in his underwear. Mm, again. 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 Sorry, yeah. what was that? I was watching the Star Trek episode, but I just heard Connor Trinity in his underwear. Hello? <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm transfixed. Am I, I'm I watching the wrong thing? <laughs> I am. I am a. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> it's all about the frosted self, tips, guys. Goodwill. Did you just self-edit then? I think I saw it happening live. Yeah, I got rather warm <laughs> for a minute there. Sorry, I'm back now. <clears throat> There's no way Isaac would have edited that. What a glorious six foot model. What an incredible shot. Yeah. And well, off into God, the sunset. That, 
is Starship Mine. We have rescued the Enterprise. We have been very on swept. Um, mm. <laughs> thank you very much for being on this journey with us today. Before we do wrap it up, I'd like um, if we could all have a chance of just introducing each other's pods and um, where people could find us um, if they've enjoyed what they've listened to today. So we might start with Kaki, who was first on the line today. Oh, awesome. Um, well, we've, we're here with Mr. Uh, Goodwill from the uh, Trekking Up North uh, podcast, which um, curiously has a visual component. I was quite shocked to find out. Like, I didn't know the podcast was supposed to do that. So uh, uh, very impressed with that. Um, and, um, well, I hope somebody else can introduce the others because, like, I'm, I'm honestly, oh, no, people are leaving the screen. I'm just going to, I don't oh. even know how to do... I'm, I'm trying to do Dan's vamping song from the It's Got Star Trek podcast that I've been binging instead of listening to all the other podcasts. I'm, I'm really, just someone rescue me, please. I'm just, I'm just an intern. I'm new. You've got to save me. I'm, I'm I Captain think, Goodwill. <laughs> I'm I, Captain I think Goodwill. I might have introduced it badly. I mean, when I said introduce each other's podcast, I mean introduce your own rather than having to introduce what someone else is doing on this oh, chat. Oh, fuck, that makes a lot more sense. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, okay, then, hi, hi. Uh, Take I'm two. Kaki, uh, and together with my uh, uh, my co-host, Kay, and our hardworking chief engineer, Greg, uh, we do The Joy of Trek, uh, and it's, uh, it's, a, it's a fairly new podcast. We're just the, uh, the, the sort of cadets on the scene. Um, where we find lesser loved episodes of, of Star Trek that people have uh, recommended to us um, from their like their personal perspectives and, 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 and um, uh, life experiences. And we try to find what's really excellent about that because nobody ever sat down to write a bad episode of Star Trek and every episode is someone's favorite and it might as well be us. Fantastic. I am, I do have code of honor in the back of my brain to think, does anyone... Would anyone have that as their favorite? We have a, you make a very good point. We have a little list of ones that we probably won't choose to do ourselves. Yeah. But if somebody sends us a recommendation and they, and they have a, a, like a, a, some perspective that we perhaps here right now can't immediately imagine, mm. uh, I, I'd be very interested to hear about that. Yeah, I do like the philosophy that every episode is someone's favorite. I think, I think we could all be a little bit more nicer about episodes with that in mind that, you know, yeah, what, what what you're potentially criticizing is someone's, you know, hey, Jude, well, let it be. Yeah. And critique is valid, right? I mean, exactly. a lot of Star Trek is, let's be fair, heinous. <laughs> True. <laughs> yeah. Um, Mark, if you're still on the line, do you want to do an intro of what you and the team do? When you're not. Do you an know, intro of what? What do you what? do? You do, you do? Shuttle Pod Show. Oh, uh, I'm Mark Cartier. I produce something called the Shuttle Pod Show, which is a Star Trek talk show. Uh, and uh, we are that's launching. Not how you say it. Uh, you do what we're I launching that's not a how you say it. show. Uh, what? That's not how it's pronounced. I like. I've listened to the show. I know it's pronounced differently. We gotta watch the gift card tonight. I'm sorry, I can't hear anything you're saying. I'm in a fucking line at a grocery store. I was trying to make a joke about so I was trying to Twinkies, to guys. Oh, yeah, you do this. <laughs> yeah. uh, did he leave? Maybe he left. Uh, we, uh, All right. What is going on? Oh, we're just uh, getting, giving everyone a chance to um, talk about their podcast and. Um, I'll I'll go. Them. I will go. Let Michael go. Okay. I am. Um, why am I speaking like this? I'm Captain Goodwill. I am Michael Goodwill. I am uh, one of the hosts of Trekking Up North, um, which was heavily plagiarized uh, from the concept of the Shuttle Pod Show because I saw the Shuttle Pod Show. I was a huge fan and I'm like, I want to do this. <laughs> um, so <laughs> we only started and it's crazy we only started in february reviewing picard season three we reviewed all the new star treks this year um we uh with my co-host um graham who is a geesian from the planet honk as he calls it um 
we we review all of Star Trek. We've we've done the latest episodes, like we say, and we have a double wheel of episodes where we will spin the wheel. When it lands, we go double, and whatever it lands on, we review. Luckily, we have not had Code of Honor yet. However, he has threatened on multiple occasions to program the wheel with only Code of Honor, to which there is not enough alcohol in the world for me to get through. Um, I will have so much fun doing this live uh, show of mine. I get drunk. We have such a laugh. We basically go very unhinged. Like we reviewed the menagerie and basically accuse Spock of kidnapping a disabled person for his own benefits and locking him in the broom right. cupboard. Wow. Um, which is I mean, oddly, oddly the truth in, in the menagerie. Um, but we, we absolutely love doing what we do. We have met some wonderful people. Um, it's been an honor to meet Mark and have a drink with him. And I think he realized just how batshit crazy I was. And yeah. <laughs> no, no, that's what I like. That's what I like about you. <laughs> um, but no, it's, it's, uh, it's been an absolute honor to get to know everyone, get to know Isaac and Andrew from Unplanned Trek, uh, despite the, the song Blame Daniels being living in my head rent free for God knows how long. Um, yeah, but yeah, we, uh, I, I, <laughs> Jack, really I don't know how you do it. <laughs> yeah. We are on a little break uh, for Christmas and, and, and other things, but we will be back in January to review all the Star Trek episodes and movies in existence, starting in January with the motion picture. Uh, mm. There are 17 different versions of the motion picture, I believe, so yeah. God knows which one we're going to review, but it's going to be so much fun. Um, and next year I'm in Vegas. So if any of you guys are at Star Trek or Tre Trek Las Vegas, is it called now, or SDLV, if you are there, come and say hello. I will be very uncomfortable, but then once I get to know you and know you're not a threat, I will be like, hi, I'm your best friend. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. You'll be more uncomfortable with me. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's terrific. Thank you. And we've got two Jacks now up here, you could say. We'll start with um, Jack in the States. Oh, Jack in the States is me. Um, so uh, I have a, we have a podcast, my, my buddy Earl Gray and I. Uh, my name is David, but I play Jack Dorino for our podcast. And uh, well, we thank are you for an episodic it. review. Oh, it's my pleasure. Uh, we are an episodic review of today's best visions of the future, Starting in 2017, we had some gap times, though, so sometimes we have to go back. We are just finishing up the Discovery Season 4, although we've already done all of Strange New Worlds and Prodigy, and we're continuing to do things as they are released. We have a special episode that's actually dropping, or I guess I should say has dropped on Christmas that I hope everyone can check out. Uh, it's a very, very, very special episode that I'm very proud of. Uh, and then we'll be moving on to Picard until uh, Prodigy and uh, Discovery Season 5 come out. Fantastic. I'm looking forward to seeing the Christmas episode. Maybe a newbie question. Did you mention the mm. name of your podcast? Oh, that's a good point. It is called Let's Talk About Tracks. Okay, good. Okay, timing that right now. Thank you. What a fantastic name. I know. Hey. I love and we've it. got Jack next to me here in at Unplanned Trek Towers. Do you want to talk about the podcast that you do? Yes, yeah, so we do it together. Mm. Um, we review Trek episodes in two minutes, and that's literally it. We just have to talk about it as quickly as possible, try and get everything we want to say out and not be – not. sometimes we do run out of things to say, which is – Which is hard. funny. <laughs> Jack, when you reviewed Threshold, did, was it just two minutes of screaming? Threshold's brilliant. <laughs> yeah. Hey, <laughs> hang on. The threshold was on, like our second or third episode. It's actually pretty good. <laughs> ah, salamanders. Ah. <laughs> that was weird. Me first watching it because Voyager was the first series I watched. So that wasn't. It wasn't the best episode I've ever watched of Voyager. Um, hey, Threshold. Hedge, it, love what you love, Jack. It's awesome. Threshold All Trek is good. Trek in consideration on my list of Fifty Shades of Trek. I would, it, I would put it. I would put it. Fifty Shades of Trek. Yeah. It's pretty sexy. It's very sexy. Yes. Um, yes. So I think yeah, that's I'm, I'm pretty excited, excited about this. 
yeah, everyone in the room's had a chance, I think, to say hello. So I really appreciate that. Um, as, as I just said, we're on Unplanned Trek. We've just started the Fifty Shades of Trek project with Counterpoint we recorded last week. Um, and we'll be doing another one, I reckon, next week as well, which I can reveal is an Enterprise episode. I'm not saying yet which one. And they're all pretty sexy because they've, they've got that gel they put on for some reason. Yeah, it's a sexy <laughs> show, isn't it? <laughs> but, yeah, thank you guys so much for jumping on today. I'm going to try to do a quick edit of this and put at least the audio version out, hopefully before Christmas. And I mean your time, not mine. It's nearly Christmas here now. It's Christmas and my... <laughs> Less than 12 hours. It's like Die Hard. I've only got a few minutes to get it all right. <laughs> be, be sure to put a pack of cigarettes and a, and a lighter in the, the ventilation system for, for John McLean. I was going to put you were meant for Jack. <laughs> oh, well, I mean. <laughs> ho, ho, ho. He passes 18. Right? Ho, 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 yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so thank, thank you guys so much for joining. This was a lot of fun. Um, Hopefully we could do something like this again soon. Loved it. Yeah. Oh, thank yeah. you for the invitation. Thanks. And thank you, everyone. It's so great to meet you all. Yeah. Absolutely. Quite thank you for jumping on. Have a great Christmas, guys. Yeah. Merry Peace Christmas. Peace and long all. life. Peace and long life. Bye. <laughs>